Hi everybody, um, we're now dealing with my first sermon online, and um, bring out your Bibles. Um, I'm David Whitney Burt, um, ministry leader of the Christian Asperger Autism Group. We're going to be looking at God's Word and dealing with autism. The, me the title of the message today it's throughout the Bible, the beginning of autism, God's promise about autism, and is there any hope in autism? First of all, let's open a word of prayer. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We ask that you speak to each and every one of us on what you have to say to us. We give glory and thanks in your, in your name, and Jesus' name name amen amen okay let us let us start um it is a blessing that god ha is opening so many ministries and sending more missionaries to other countries to minister god's word who haven't even heard of jesus our lord and savior but they are some ministries that that are needed that we hardly have even in countries like the United States, United Kingdom, and others, and one of them are ministries dealing with autism. Many questions on how to deal with autism and emotional disorders. These are hard things to deal with. Most of our churches are unable to deal with this and also other emotional disorders. Today my country has worldly programs for Americans with emotional disabilities they are somewhat help but they can they cannot provide a hundred percent of full help they provide either some help or little help today the world's answer is to medicate not educate and secular counselors and psychiatrists who don't provide much help they provide some help and mostly look at autism people most of them with autism like cases and profit not people most of them not all of them are more concerned about profit and money than really helping others some or most don't even want them cured because they are worried about their finances more than helping with all the research I've done I have not found hardly any ministries dealing with autism and emotional disorders god wants christians to unite because we need each other and god it can and god it can seem hopeless that autistic people and people who don't suffer from autism have a hard time getting along with each other even christians who are saved have a hard time getting along with with other believers who suffer from autism it seems impossible and hopeless but the good news is nothing is impossible for God he is in control and he understands autism better than anybody and he knows how to help we're going to know how by having God's work having God work in our lives and learning his word about this first let's look at today today we live in a fallen world cursed, crooked, where most non-Christians who care nothing about you unless you have money. A world of pride, evil, pleasure, and now ruled by Satan. We wonder why are some of us were made the way we are. Some were made blind, deaf, physical problems, emotional problems, and of course why do some of us were made autistic? Where did autism begin? And why did a God allow this? We wonder that a lot. The answer lies in the book of Genesis 1 through 3. Also in the first three chapters tells how Satan first took power of this world. Let's look in Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 2. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness 
was face deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now here, in these two verses, is our beginning, when God started to create the earth. Here in Genesis 2 is the creation of man and woman. Let's jump a little forward to Genesis chapter 2, verses 7 through 9. And God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man whom he had formed, and out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow as pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the mists of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Let's look at Genesis 2, 15 through 17. Then God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to attend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree the garden you may freely eat, but the knowledge of but the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in that day you will surely die. Here God gave Adam the earth and full authority. God warned Adam and Eve if they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that they would die. God meant spiritual death and the death of the world. God gave us free will because God wanted us to choose and obey us. The reason why he gave us free will is because he loves us and wanted us to choose him on our own free will. Not his will, but our will. God does not force but love. God gave free will to Satan, but Satan wanted to rule over God, and instead of serving God, he tried to overthrow him and reject God's love. As a result of his attempt to overthrow God, he was cast out of heaven, and God showed him nothing but love, and Satan chose to reject God and, and tried to overthrow God and failed. Instead, God placed Satan on earth out of heaven and sentenced him and his fallen angels to hell. God put Satan there because God wanted to test to see if Adam and Eve would either choose God or Satan to obey. Let's go to Genesis 3 one, verses 1 through 19. The, the beginning of Satan's rule. Now the serpent, which was Satan, was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said, And the woman said, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden but of the of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god has said you shall not eat it nor shall you touch it lest you die then the serpent said to the woman you shall not surely die for god knows that in the day you eat of it your eyes will be will be open and you will be like god knowing good and evil so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and, desire, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband, and with her he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew... They were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of God walking in the, in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? 
So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat. Then the man said, the woman said, then the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And the, and the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So God said to the serpent, because of you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field on your belly. You shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I will put amenity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He, sh he shall crush your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will multiply your sorrow and your conception and pain, and you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake, and toll you shall eat of it. All the days of your life both thorn and thistle shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the herb of the field and sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you were taken for dust you are and dust you shall return and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living things also for Adam and his wife, the, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now let us put out, of, out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of Garden of Eden and a flaming sword, which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Adam and Eve had a comfortable life in the Garden of Eden. It was a trouble-free place to live, and they could do anything they wanted, and... God only commanded them to do one thing, not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because of Adam and Eve chose to disobey God and obey Satan, God had taken away the, the Garden of Eden and God had given the world to Satan. Also, Adam and Eve lost the world to Satan. The curse and the problems of the world started to begin, and things started getting worse and worse. Birth defects happened. Part of the curses were physical and emotional handicaps start to happen on some humans. Many other horrible problems, and also the beginning of autism. It was, li it was like when AIDS began, because of one man disobeying one of God's commandments when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit not only were they infected with sin their seed and their children and their generations were infected and cursed with sin as well this is why we have so many problems in this world as I stated the first sin started when Adam and Eve chose to disobey God and lost their perfect lives when they chose to obey Satan, God's plan was for Adam and Eve to live in perfect lives by serving and pleasing God. By doing this, by doing that, we would have lived in a perfect com in comfort. But 
since Adam and Eve sinned, they lost their comfort. Now keep in mind, God didn't place Satan on this earth to tempt us, but to test us. God does not tempt us. It says in James 1, 13, James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then desire has conceived and gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. These verses say right here, God does not tempt anyone. He loves and protects us. Only Satan tempts and, and condemns, not God. It, it, also, it, it, said, it said also in these verses that sin is death. We don't know what God's plan was if Adam and Eve chose not to obey Satan. If they hadn't ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, maybe Satan and his angels would have been cast in hell after Satan tempted Adam and Eve. Or maybe there would have been, been a couple more temptations from Satan to test Adam and Eve's obedience to God. Also by Adam and Eve's sin could have delayed God's plan for Satan's entry into hell by the sin Adam and Eve committed may have had something to do with why Satan is on this earth so long. We don't know. Only God knows. We wonder about these questions a lot. As you start to sin, it gets worse. The more you sin and choose to disobey God, the worse it gets. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, and obeyed Satan, the earth was cursed. God gave the Ten Commandments not to do this because he loves us. Not doing it to be mean, but he gave the commandments on what not to do because he knew it was bad for us. Same thing with the commandment he gave Adam and Eve, not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He told them not to, to eat or touch it. Because he loved them and made it clear and said, you will surely die. And he was right. God does not punish us. He tries to protect us from sin. Because sin causes great harm towards us. It says in Psalm 103 verses 10 through 13, He has not dealt with us according to our sins nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. This shows what God this shows what God is. He loves all of his children. God could have lifted up the curse and cast Satan in hell right away. A, a, lot of, a lot ask that, but the curse is still there because we continue to sin. But the good news is he gave us a cure from sin. His son, Jesus Christ, was the cure. And we are saved from our sins because God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the only human. He came as a human that never sinned to die on the cross and also gave us the Holy Spirit. Now, for those who suffer from autism and emotional disorder like I do, that is one of the reasons why we... We have it because of Adam and Eve's sin. We're cured of sin, but not of autism or other problems and the damages sin caused to the world. These problems and evil will always remain in this world until we die and go to heaven to be with God and we will be cured in Jesus' second coming and he 
will bring the second cure, the end of all sicknesses, diseases, and evil of the world, and the world will be cured. When Jesus returns to this earth, it says in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are, are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from the heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And this we, we will always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. On verse 18, that's one of the things God wants us to do in the present, which is now comfort each other until we go home to God. These things will not take place until all countries of the world know the good news of salvation of Jesus Christ and the coming of the Antichrist, the last evil ruler of the world. Right now we live in a fallen and cursed world, which is still ruled by Satan, but the second coming of Jesus will end Satan's kingdom. One of God's promises to us is we will be cured and we will be perfect when we go to our home in heaven to be with him. And the world will be cured on Jesus' second coming when he defeats the Antichrist. But in order to have these two promises and other promises and have a place in heaven, we have to receive Jesus' first cure. That is the cure of, of sin, for sin. Some people say, if we if we just do be good and do good things we will go to heaven by doing good without accepting Jesus as your cure won't get it won't get you into heaven just like we want a raffle we have the winning ticket and if we don't present our winning ticket to claim our prize we can't get it it's the same thing for our rewards and treasures in heaven. If we don't have Jesus as our Savior, we can't claim our heavenly treasures and enter into heaven. Jesus is our best winning ticket. Now we should be doing, we should be doing good by doing good God rewards us and gives us riches in heaven. But without Jesus and not experience, Accepting his cure and his love for us, we can't have our riches and reward in heaven. To get this cure, you have to accept him as your Lord and Savior and repent of your sins. If you don't accept this cure from Jesus, then you will live in hell with Satan and his fallen angels. Because there is no place for sin and rejection of God's love in heaven because heaven is the only pure place right now and God needs a pure sin free place there has to be a place of purity and holiness and spotless in, he in heaven God's kingdom is the only pure and clean place right now he wants us there and he has a place for us and wants us to have it and share and live live in his kingdom and his home and have him with us forever. God doesn't want you in hell. He doesn't want anybody in hell. He wants the best for you. He loves everybody. He even loves Satan. He wants you to be cured from sin. 
He wants you to be with him. He wants you to be saved and, and have a, his wonderful plan for your life. Jesus also wants to be part of your life because he loves you. And right now, for those of you who have autism, emotional disorders, if you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to. Just call him into your heart. He will come and ask for forgiveness for your sins, and he will forgive you, and he will help you. That's the best decision I made in 2000. I made one of the best decisions. Check my video testimony. For those of you who are suffering from autism, emotional disorders, that have Jesus as your Savior, you have the best help and care, and he will help you. Is there any hope in how can we overcome autism? How can God help? Have any of you seen the movie Pinocchio, the Disney cartoon movie? Well, do you remember the Blue Fairy gave Pinocchio Jimmy the Cricket? How tr he tried to guide Pinocchio out of trouble? Do you wonder about your voice that's in your head to tell you not to do this? That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. God gave you. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 4, verse 13. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. And go to Romans 8. Romans 8, verses 24 through 28. For we are saved in this hope. But hope that is that that is seen is not hope for why does one still hope for what he sees? For we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for, for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for, as we ought to. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with, with groaning which cannot be uttered. Now who searches the heart knows the, what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who, who are the called according to his purpose. Jump to verse 37. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's God's answer for the hope of autism. These verses are saying when we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit works with our disorders and helps us to do God's will. And when we pray with a good heart, God understands us. You see, Jimmy Crick, the Cricket was God Pinocchio's Holy Spirit. We saw the troubles and messes Pinocchio got into by disobeying Jimmy, Jimmy the Cricket. Learn from Pinocchio. Obey God and the Holy Spirit because they will keep you out of trouble. There may be people who will try to take advantage of you but the Holy Spirit will tell you if someone if someone tries to get you to do evil and you know it's wrong if you worry if you don't do that evil thing these people will make fun of you and not accept you think you're not cool or not care about you well let me tell you something if they try to make you do that evil thing they never cared or never loved you to begin with and they're not worth worrying what they think of you. It says in Philippians chapter 3 verses 2 through 3 to watch out. Beware of dogs. Beware, beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus. And have no confidence in the flesh. This also says don't be confident in ourselves. 
but be confident in God. We should let God guide us because we'll always be, be handicapped in this world. Worry about what God thinks. If you worry about being alone, don't worry because God will send you people who care and love you even if you're even if even of your autism or other emotional disorder. God will be there for you. And here are two of his greatest promises. It says in Philippians four nineteen, God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and in glory by Christ Jesus. And John fourteen chapter fourteen verses seventeen through eighteen. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will never leave you orphans. I will come to you. In these verses, God proves God's love for us. Jesus and God and Jesus' promises, he will never leave you, and they will provide us with all our needs. God doesn't promise us that he will heal us completely from autism. But I believe he will heal you enough to do as well and heal you enough to understand him and to share his peace if you'll let him. Also, he will heal you enough for your needs. God will, will only help you if you allow him to. Remember, God's in control and he just wants what's best for us. And knows you and understands you better than anybody. True brothers and sisters in Christ love people with autism, emotional disorders, and other people that are hard to love. People with autism have concerns in surviving in this world. The key is to seek God and to trust Him with all our heart and to do His will. By doing this, the Holy Spirit will, will He guide you and help you. That's the main part of dealing with autism, is to help, to have God and the Holy Spirit to work with your disorder. You, you will see a great difference in your life. We will talk about other issues in God's Word, with what situations people who suffer from autism have a hard time dealing with, and how to overcome it by God's help in other series of God's Word in dealing with autism. Those who suffer from autism. Remember how God values you, values you, and how much He loves you. And His promise that He will never leave and He will help you and supply with all your needs because He loves you. Those who don't suffer from autism, don't turn away from an autistic person or have concerns about having a relationship with an autistic person. Just don't think of them as autistic. Think of them as people who need God and Jesus in their lives, who are handicapped without God and to the world and see God's help about this. I will say this for myself. Being a person who suffers from autism, I want people to remember me and be thought of as a man who fears God, who is handicapped without God, and someone who trusts and relies on God to guide my life. And my wheelchair is God, and that's what I want people to remember me as, and I'm not ashamed to, at all to say this because I love God more than anything, and all should love God more than anything, and at least I try to. God wants you to love your neighbor, and everyone is your neighbor, even an autistic person. Autistic people need a lot of love and encouragement, especially God's love. That's the important thing to remember ministering to an autistic person. Just remember, God can do all things possible and can work any but in anybody's life. Even an autistic person can can do anything as long as they, they do their best to focus on God. I, str I struggle with obeying God. I, I still fall. But I'm grateful to have Jesus as my Lord and Savior. None of us will ever be perfect, but 
we should be thankful that we have Jesus in our lives. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this message. We ask for those who are suffering that you'll speak to them. For those of you, those who need help badly, I pray that you'll help them. I pray that you'll speak to them and be with them. And have people, brothers and sisters in Christ, understand each other. That is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You all take care and thank you so much for listening to God's message. Take care. Bye-bye.